In this video we're going to look at a couple examples of simplifying expressions using the laws of exponents. So here's our first one. We have a, a excuse me, 8 a to the 1 seventh, b to the 5 7th, that whole thing to the third power. And before you start these, if you're not sure what to do, you've really got to go back and look at your laws of exponents and make sure that you know them um, and try to find the ones that apply to this problem. So um, right off the bat, one of the ones that apply to this problem is if you have two things in a parentheses, two or more, and they're taken to some power, you have to take each thing in that parentheses to that power. Okay, we have this situation here. We have three things multiplied together inside a parenthesis, and that whole thing is to the third power. So we have to take 8 to the third power, a to the 1 seventh to the third power, and b to the 5 seventh to the third power. So it might look something like this. 8 to the third power times a to the 1 seventh. We have to take that to the third power. There's a little quicker way to write this, but we'll write it out this way the first time. And then I have to take the b to the 5 sevenths to the third power, everything to the third power. Now the 8 to the third power, I can just figure that out, 8 times 8 times 8. So that would be uh, 64 times 8, which would be 512. That's not so bad, just 8 times 8 times 8. Now a to the 1 seventh to the third power, this brings up another rule. If you have something to a power and then that is taken to a power again, what do you do with these exponents right here? Hopefully you remember, you multiply them. x to the m times n. So a to the 1 7th to the 3rd I have to multiply 1 7th times 3, which is 3 over 1, so that just gives me a to the 3 sevenths. 3 times 1 on the top, 7 times 1 on the bottom. Same rule is going to apply for this b to the 5 sevenths uh, to the third power. So I'm going to multiply 5 sevenths times 3, which is 3 over 1. That gives me 15 sevenths. Now in this problem, I would just leave it like this probably. Um, there's some stuff you can do and change this around. But if the, if the instructions just say to simplify using the laws of exponents, I would stop here. It doesn't say to write it as a radical or do anything like that. You could actually skip this second step. You could skip this second step right here. If you knew your rules, you could just take 8 to the 3rd and write 512, and then 8 to the 1 7th to the 3rd and multiply the 3 times the 1 7th and make that your exponent, and the 3 times the 5 sevenths. That's all there is to it. All right, let's look at another example. One more example. Let's say we have x to the 3 fifths over x to the 6 fifths times x to the negative 5. So this brings up some other rules we're going to need to know. Well, let's see. Where should we start? We have a couple options of where we could start. And that's one of the things about these kind of problems is there's always more than one way to do it. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, this negative exponent. Let's take care of this negative exponent. So a rule for negative exponent is anything to a negative power equals the reciprocal of that thing to a positive power. Negative exponents are kind of tricky because people want to make them negative numbers, but they're not. A negative exponent means a reciprocal. So if my negative exponent right here is in the denominator, this is usually how you see the rule, but if it was in the denominator and you take the reciprocal of something that's in the denominator, it's going to flip it and bring it to the numerator. So this x to the negative fifth, if I want to make that x to the positive fifth, I've got to bring it up here, and then it will become x to the positive fifth. I think that's a good place to start with your negative exponents, get rid of make those positive. So now I have x to the three fifths still on top, and now I have x to the fifth on top and x to the six fifths on the bottom. So all I did was take my x to the negative fifth, move it to the top, that makes it a positive five. Okay, let's see. Now we could look at what's in the numerator and see if we can simplify that. x to the three fifths times x to the fifth. What's the rule for that? Well, the rule for that is if you have x to a power times 
x to another power, what do we do with those exponents? We combine those together. Do you remember? Hopefully you remember that you add them. So we have to add these two exponents together. I think I'm going to get rid of this first example so we have a little more room here. Okay. So we need to add 3 fifths plus 5. And uh, the easy way to do that, you have a whole number and a fraction, so it's just uh, 5 and 3 fifths. That's all there is to it. 3 fifths plus 5 is 5 and 3 fifths. Let's write that um, up here. So now we've got go like this. Now we've got x to the 5 and 3 fifths over x to the 6 fifths. How do we simplify that? Okay, here's another rule. x to the n over x to the m. How do we simplify that? Well, if x to the n times x to the m is x to the n plus m, when you're multiplying you add, guess what you do when you divide? Hopefully you remember that you subtract. Now if you're getting to the point where you're doing problems like this, hopefully you've been introduced to these rules. They're probably going to be, you know, in the section of your book that has these problems or you know, you have to have these rules in order to simplify these kind of problems and you have to memorize these rules in order to simplify these kind of problems. Unless of course you're given the rules um, on your quiz or test or homework. So we have to subtract 5 and 3 fifths and 6 fifths. So 5 and 3 fifths take away 6 fifths. So basically we have a fraction problem here. We could change, change them both to mixed numbers or let's go ahead and do that. So what is 5 and 3 fifths in um, an imp I, I mean improper fraction. Let's change them to improper fractions. So 5 times 5 plus 3 uh, would be 28. So that would give me 28 fifths minus 6 fifths. We already have a common denominator, so that's nice. So 28 take away 6 would be 22 fifths. And probably the answer in your book is just going to be like that, x to the 22 fifths. Um, I guess we could write it as 4 and 2 fifths, but you really don't see that too much. You don't see mixed numbers in numerators. And really the reason for that is because of this last rule. I think I've got space to write it. If you have x to a fractional exponent, like n over m, we rewrite that as the mth root of x to the n. And actually this n could be on the outside of this thing as well. I'll write it over here. Or you could write it as the mth root of x all to the nth power. And probably you're going to run into problems where they're going to ask you to write something that uh, has a fractional exponent as a radical, and then you would want to use this rule. So therefore, most of the time, you're going to see the answer left in a form like that, so that if you wanted to, you could easily rewrite it as a radical, which in this case, and the problem doesn't ask us to do it, but why not, since we're talking about it? I'll keep that... Uh, in red there because that's really the answer to simplifying the problem we're done but if we did want to write it as a radical we could say that it was equivalent to the fifth root of x to the 22nd power and that would simplify to um, x to the fourth times the fifth root of x to the second. That's kind of a whole other topic, but that's how it would simplify. All right, so again, these are this is the key over here. These rules. Memorize these rules. Make sure you know all these rules in order to uh, simplify these kind of problems.